This is going to be part two in my 2013 Cicada 3301 series. I know I've been away for some time now, but I'm just going to start right in and offer an explanation in a future video. I hope by now you've watched both part one of this series, as well as the tutorial I put up about the exclusive OR function, as we're going to be relying on them both quite heavily for this entry. Let's start right where we left off, with 3301's Twitter account. If you recall from last time, we'd left off looking at something a little like this. At the time, in 2013, once we dug through the disk image and found this account, most of these posts weren't here. It was steadily posting, seemingly automatically, one of these messages every few minutes. The interesting thing was that it had started around the same time we had discovered how to get the Dropbox file, meaning 3301 either waited for a set time after releasing the puzzle, before they began this step, or possibly even waited until the first person had downloaded the file from Dropbox. Either way, we had a long time to wait and wonder at the meaning of these before it would finish. I'm going to take a brief break here for a moment to talk about ways of encoding data. Many of you may be familiar with the format of these messages. These are a hex dump of a file, with one line from the dump being released with each post. The number before the colon is the offset, or how far into the binary file you are, and the letters and numbers after that are the next 65 bytes encoded as hexadecimal. The reason these hex conversions are used is primarily to make a binary file more readable and more compact. If 3301 had been posting this as a binary, it would have taken around four times as many posts to relay the same information, because each single letter or number is representing four bits of binary. At 130 characters after the offset, that again makes each tweet 65 bytes of information being given. The final message would give us a little bit more information, though by that time this step had already been solved and everyone was just waiting for it to finish so we could race on. The last post tells us that there are 65 columns in each line, and that there are 988 lines in total. So while hex is wonderful for compressing a binary file to be looked at by a person, we have to convert it back into binary to do anything with it. Especially as we can tell already by looking at the first few bytes that this file isn't going to be anything on its own. My personal preference for converting it back to binary is by using the command line tool xxd, and it's used like this. Running the file utility on the result confirms what we expected. This is just a seemingly random collection of binary and not anything that we can use or read yet. So here's where that tutorial I said you should watch is going to come into things. Again, if you haven't seen it, here's a link to it. Exclusivor, as you've already seen, is a powerful way to obscure what a file really contains, and 3301 has used it as this next step of the puzzle. Now, before I show you that, if you're wondering how I arrived at these specific combinations of files, while some of it was careful analysis of the results after XORing the first few bits, there's also a large amount of testing and guessing involved. So we had a number of potentially useful files from that disk image, and I'll remind you of two directories in particular. One contained 761.mp3, the song, and the other contained these strange binary files, the 560 files. Thankfully here, the most useful combination is also the easiest. I'm going to XOR the binary dumped by the Twitter and the mp3 together. Here you can see the first part of that working, and the result. If you're familiar at all with file headers, you'll recognize right away that this combination is giving us a JPEG file. Now the primary reason you would have to wait for the Twitter to be done is that if you take the partial amount that had been dumped at any given point, you didn't actually get the full image. However, there was a way around that, and I'm going to look into that before I show you the finished results. So let's take a look at 560.13. I'm picking this one specifically because the other files either weren't useful until much later, or like Wisdom and Folly wouldn't come up again this year at all. If you take 560.13 and XOR it with the mp3, we'll go ahead and open the file, and you may recognize this as just again seemingly random binary, like we saw in the tutorial video. However, if you XOR this result from these two, with the partial dump of the Twitter that we had at this point, we got something else. Unlike all the 560s on their own, as well as all the different combinations of XORing files together, this one ends up entirely in alphanumeric characters that are easily printed to screen. It's incredibly unlikely that it would end up like this at printable characters randomly, so it was worth a closer look. So again, we're going to talk about encoding. 
3301 had used hex to compact the info they wanted to dump to the Twitter. If you're familiar with any other encoding types, you may recognize this piece as base64. It's an even more compact way to express the binary, with each character instead representing 6 bits, compared to the 4 of hex. Like hex, an easy bash script will convert this back into the binary, which a file command again will this time recognize it as a PNG file, and it looked like this. That is, as long as you've had enough of the Twitter dumped at that point to complete it. It's quite a familiar image, but this time without any text or anything else, and given that it's a PNG, 3301's favorite steganography tool also won't help us here. So let's take a closer look at the file before we converted it. It's worth considering at this point why 3301 would want an even more compact way of giving us binary for this file than the hex they've been using previously. If we look at it again closely, the answer was wonderful. There's a short amount of base64 that makes up the PNG image that we can get out of it, but if we scroll past this point, we see this repeating section at the end of the file. So I'll briefly talk about what we've learned up to this point. By XORing 560.13 with the mp3 and the Twitter dump, we've got this base64 file. What that tells us is that what 560.13 is as a file is the result of XORing three things, the Twitter, the base64 file, and the mp3. Again, if you've seen the tutorial, that means as long as the base64 file is long enough, if we XOR 560 with that file and the mp3, we should get the only other file that had been used in it, which in this case is the entirety of the Twitter data, regardless of whether the Twitter had finished dumping it or not. And we've just discovered that the last part of the base64 file is a repeating sequence, which means we can just repeat it out as long as we'd like to make it the right length to get the Twitter back. I'll quickly do the XOR operations, and we get the entire Twitter dump back, regardless of whether we had it all to start with or not, which at least in 2013 allowed certain individuals, myself included, to skip waiting for the Twitter to finish dumping before we carried on. So regardless of whether you waited or not, or use this method to get the full thing out of 560.13, finally we can XOR 761.mp3 as I showed earlier in the video, and receive the full image. Now, if you've looked ahead at all at future years, you may have already seen this file. At the time, we couldn't make much sense of it at all. A gematria is not a concept that 3301 had made up, but this particular combination of letters, numbers, and runes was unique at the time of their puzzle. While many of you may be familiar with the concept of gematria, uh, most likely because of the famous one used for Hebrew characters, the concept of applying numbers to letters to either hide or derive some meaning from the numerical combinations actually predates that one by quite some time. It's been a popular concept for a lot of human history, with a the theory being that the right gematria would tell you something about the words or numbers by finding what words or phrases would add up to the same numerical value through the gematria table. Now, before we rush off to start adding up 3301's favorite phrases, which is actually something I will be covering in my next video, 3301 used one of their old favorite methods to deliver the next step of the puzzle here. The image that we finally received from the extensive XOR operations also contained the steganographically hidden message using outguess. As usual, we'll extract it like this, and arrive at the following. This seemingly empty message is where I'll be leaving off on part 2, and next time I'll show how it's solved, and we'll get into one of the more interesting pieces of the 2013 puzzle, what the community refers to as the TCP server. All going well, that video should come out quite a bit sooner than the wait you had for this one. As usual, good luck.